Hi everybody, my name is Danielle Nicole. If you enjoy beauty, fragrance, and makeup, then you are definitely in the right place. And today's video is going to be all about the House of Dua. Now, in case you didn't know, Dua is a brand that creates inspirations, dupes, or clones, however you'd like to word it, but they also create some of their own fragrances as well. Now, I do have four different fragrances that I am going to be talking about in today's video. Two of them are going to be perfect for cooler weather and the other two for warmer. Now, not only are these fragrances my first time ever testing out from the House of Dua, but these are actually my first dupe fragrances that I've ever tested out. So I'm pretty excited to see what the House of Dua is all about. So what I have for you today are four very hyped inspiration fragrances from EBK, YSL, and Tom Ford. So if you're excited to hear my thoughts about these fragrances from Dua and enjoy the video while you're watching, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and let's get started right now. All right, so first off, please excuse my attire. It is absolutely freezing today. In fact, all the kids had a snow day, so I'm definitely bundled up. So the first fragrance is the YSL Inspiration of Baby Cat. So this is called Vanilla Baby from the House of Dua. Now, first things first, I'm really not too impressed with the packaging and the overall presentation of these bottles. So as you can see, it has almost like a cork top here, and this is plastic, so Overall, not terrible, but definitely does not scream lux in the hands. But I understand these are much more affordable fragrances, and what I really care about is the juice inside. Now, because I live in the United States, I unfortunately was never able to get my hands on Baby Cat. I was really bummed. It was just never released where I live, but I do have Vanilla Baby. So let's first get into the notes and main accords. So this is classified as an amber spicy fragrance, and the notes are elmi resin, pink pepper, black pepper, alibanum, saffron, bourbon vanilla, suede, leather, and cedar wood. Now, in case you missed it, I did briefly mention Vanilla Baby in my last top 10 favorite date night fragrances. So I'm not going to go super in depth, but I did want to elaborate a bit more on this one. Now, even though the packaging is not anything exquisite, I will say the atomizers on these fragrances are very impressive. So let's give this a spray and then we will talk about the scent. Just a beautiful atomizer. So I would completely agree that this fragrance is definitely an amber spicy fragrance with vanilla being the dominant note. However, there are several other notes that I do find kind of overpower the vanilla, especially in the beginning. And that is that strong black pepper you definitely get a blast of black pepper in the opening. Now I'm actually finding that I'm really growing to love the note or accord leather. I just find it makes fragrances so sexy and really elevates them to the next level. Now, unfortunately in this fragrance, the leather is not super prominent, but the suede is. And I do find the vanilla that is in this fragrance, it is not synthetic, it is not cheap smelling whatsoever. The vanilla is semi-sweet and incredibly smooth. Now, once this fragrance starts to dry down, I do notice after about 10 or 15 minutes that black pepper really does start to subside. However, you definitely do get pepper throughout the entire wear of the fragrance. Now, once the black pepper starts to tone down, that's when many of the other notes really come to the surface and they kind of create a very well-rounded spicy vanilla. So once the pepper starts to die down a bit, that's when the mid and base notes really start to come to the surface. So that's where I can definitely pick up the olibanum, the pink pepper, and definitely the suede. Now I've noticed quite a few people have mentioned that once this fragrance completely dries down, what they're basically left with is a vanilla ice cream gourmand scent. Now that is not what my nose picks up at all. Yes, the vanilla in this fragrance is a bit sweet, but it's not overly sweet and it is definitely not a gourmand. So if any of you have the original baby cat, Please let us all know in the comments down below, do you find this fragrance transforms into more of a vanilla gourmand ice cream fragrance or not so much? Now I must say, I am pretty impressed with the quality of the vanilla that is used in Vanilla Baby. It is such a beautiful vanilla accord. And once it mixes with all the other more spicy and peppery notes, I really am enjoying this. Now Vanilla Baby is classified as unisex and of course, you can wear whatever fragrances make you happy, but I do find this fragrance is more unisex-leaning feminine. 
This fragrance makes me feel like a complete badass. There is no other way to put it. I would definitely reach for Vanilla Baby when I'm going out for the night and I pull out my leather jacket and knee-high black boots. Now, the other thing that I'm finding with Dua fragrances, they are all Extrat de Parfums. Now, a lot of fragrances that are Extrats, they are not necessarily the most strong or the most projecting like you would hope, but this one definitely is. This lasts and this projects wonderfully. Again, that was Vanilla Baby from the House of Dua. The next fragrance I have for you is an inspiration of the brand new Tom Ford Electric Cherry. So this is called Electrocuted Cherry from the House of Dua. Now even though I don't have either of those Tom Ford fragrances in my collection, I did actually get a chance to wear test both of them. Now I do think both of those cherry fragrances are very nice. However, cherry is not one of my favorite notes, so I did decide to pass on both of them. So when I tested out Electric Cherry, it had the most beautiful, effervescent, almost bubbly ginger cherry note that I've ever smelled. That opening was absolutely beautiful. But what I found after just a couple of minutes, that cherry note really started to die down. And basically what I was left with is a jasmine fragrance. So did I like Electric Cherry? Yes, I do actually think it is a very nice scent. But as you can tell, since I don't have it in my collection, I did decide to pass on it. But when I saw Do I Had an Inspiration, I became very curious. Now the last thing I do want to mention about the original, not only did I find that cherry note really subsided pretty quickly, but so did the entire fragrance. My skin just completely ate that up. And I was basically left with a generic jasmine skin scent after just a couple of hours. I do find this fragrance is quite similar. But as you know, like many inspirations, they are not identical. So I do find overall, this does have a very similar kind of bright, bubbly, very effervescent scent. Especially in the opening. But I do actually find with this one... The Cherry Note sticks around much longer than the original. But the one thing I do notice with this version is that the Cherry Note is not quite as high quality as Tom Ford's. So do I think the average person would be able to tell a difference? Probably not. But if you are a fragrance collector, that may be something you want to consider. Now I do notice, especially on the opening, with the Cherry Note specifically, and this one, Electrocuted Cherry, the cherry does come across just a little bit cough syrupy, but it only lasts for a couple of minutes. After that, I do find that cough syrup scent really does start to dissipate. The jasmine starts to come to the surface. So overall, I must say I'm also enjoying Electrocuted Cherry. Now, Electrocuted Cherry is described as a gourmand as far as the classification goes. And I do actually very much agree with that. But instead of it being a foodie gourmand, it's much more of a drink gourmand. So this scent almost reminds me of like a bubbly Hawaiian punch. This is classified as unisex. Again, you can wear whatever you'd like. But to my nose, this is definitely a very heavily feminine fragrance. And the last thing I want to mention about Dua's Electrocuted Cherry, I do actually find that this fragrance lasts longer on my skin than the original. I was pretty shocked because the original, as I mentioned, it was pretty fleeting, left my skin after just a couple of hours and turned quickly into a jasmine skin scent. But I do find this one lasts very well. Now, I don't find this one has incredible projection or anything like that, but the scent bubble, just like the longevity, it's pretty good. Next up, I have an inspiration from the house of EBK. So the original is called Ruby and Vanilla Intense. So this inspiration is called Intensified Vanillic Ruby. Now this fragrance is classified as a gourmand. Now I actually do not agree with that at all, which we will get to in just a minute here. Now as far as the notes go, they are Vanilla Absolute, Bergamot, Patchouli, Sicilian Mandarin Orange, Ambergris, Almond, and Guyac Wood. So I was expecting kind of an airy almond vanilla fragrance. But that's not really what I get. In fact, I do find this fragrance is blended so well. Really the only note that I'd be able to pick up without taking a look at the notes beforehand would be ambergris and a hint of patchouli. So now that I have wear tested and worn this fragrance several times, I don't find it is a gourmand fragrance whatsoever. It's much more of kind of a velvety aromatic scent. 
I know that might sound a little bit strange, but that's how I would describe it. Now it almost gave me a little bit of a chemical vibe, especially in the opening. So when I first sprayed this fragrance, I thought, oh my gosh, I actually despise this. I just don't like it at all. But once this fragrance actually has had a chance to dry down on the skin, I do find that chemical scent does subside. Thank goodness, because that is pretty strong in the opening. And that's where some of the other notes such as vanilla and almond and also bergamot really do start to come to the surface. I do actually find this is a very unique fragrance. I don't have anything in my collection that is quite like this. As I mentioned, the notes are just so well blended together that I really can't pick up too much of anything. It's definitely a bright fragrance, but it almost has a velvety touch as I mentioned a second ago. Now I've actually never used the adjective velvety with any fragrances before, but this scent absolutely does remind me of going to the opera, which is actually how EBK describes this fragrance itself. This is just a fragrance that you really do have to try for yourself. I really don't know how else to describe it. It definitely does give me the image of someone high class, perhaps going to the opera, you're getting all dressed up, you have a beautiful gown on, and you want to smell like money. So now that I've actually had a chance to take a look at the nodes, I do pick up a bit of the almond as well as the mandarin orange. But again, all these notes are just blended so well. To my nose, what I get, kind of a bright and uplifting vanilla with a strong ambergris base. Now I will say once this fragrance actually dries down on the skin, it does smell beautiful. Now I can tell, unlike the cherry note in Electrocuted Cherry that really did not blow me away, I do think this is a very high quality fragrance. So if you are looking for a very unique fragrance to add to your collection and you don't have anything that's kind of a bright and uplifting vanilla ambergris concoction, then I would recommend giving this a try, but do not blind by it because I can see this fragrance either being a total love or an absolute total pass. So while it's not a gourmand, I have been enjoying this fragrance. Now I wouldn't say it's a love, but I do enjoy it. Now this is also annexed straight to parfum, just like all the other ones. So I must say the projection and sillage is also pretty great with this one as well. All right, next up, I have another inspiration from the house of EBK. So the original is called Deep and Desired Yacht. From the house of Dua, this is called Desired Yacht. Again, I unfortunately have never smelled the original, but you guys, this fragrance is so fun. I cannot wait to wear it when the weather starts to warm up. So this is classified as an aromatic fruity, and the notes are bergamot, grapefruit, camellia, grapes, hazelnut, pink pepper, dark chocolate, and cedarwood. Now to my nose, this is almost an aquatic fruity gourmand. It is such a bright and happy fragrance. Now my nose does pick up just a little bit of the pink pepper, but overall, what this fragrance smells like is sweet and juicy grapes mixed with a hint of hazelnut and dark chocolate. Now I do find this fragrance is quite sweet, but it is not heavy whatsoever. In fact, it almost has an airy and uplifting quality to it. Now I know a lot of people say that this fragrance smells like blueberry muffins to their nose. I just don't pick that up at all. It is straight up bright and juicy ripe grapes. So even though this fragrance has a very airy, aquatic, uplifting feel to it, it definitely does not remind me of the beach and it is definitely not anything like suntan lotion. You know, I do find there are certain fragrances that are quite photorealistic and this is definitely one of them. I can't think of a more perfect picture of being on a yacht just enjoying myself on vacation. Again, this is an extract de parfum, so I do find the projection as well as longevity is pretty great. Now, I wouldn't say it's beast mode or anything like that, but all of these fragrances really have got me through the day quite nicely. Now, I will say when it comes to Vanilla Baby, this fragrance here definitely has the biggest projection as well as longest longevity. But I must say, I am pretty impressed with the projection longevity and sillage with all of these. So let's do a quick recap. Intensified Vanilla Ruby. This is the only fragrance that I'm just not quite sure about because of that chemical opening. So I do need to play around with it a bit more especially when the weather starts to warm up. Now, if any of you out there were interested in Tom Ford's Electric Cherry, but that price tag just really deterred you, 
I would definitely recommend checking out Electrocuted Cherry. Just keep in mind some of the notes aren't quite as high quality as the original. Now as far as Vanilla Baby and Desired Yacht, these two are definitely my favorites. With Desired Yacht, I can't wait to wear this fragrance once it starts to warm up. This is just a fun fragrance. You know, you don't necessarily take yourself too seriously. You definitely do smell decadent, but it is still airy and uplifting. Whereas Vanilla Baby, I am excited to continue wearing this fragrance in the colder months. It's very sexy, kind of dark, and I don't have anything in my collection quite like this. So let me know down below, have you guys tested out any of the originals or these inspired fragrances by Dua? I would love to hear your thoughts down below. Are you guys? Well, I really hope you all enjoyed today's video. It was so much fun testing out these inspired fragrances for the first time. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Thank you so much for spending your time with me. I really do appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye guys!